Glad you guys came. My name is Jason. I'm the CEO for Ocean Group. We're headquartered out in Los Angeles, and then we have branches out in Las Vegas, San Diego, Dallas. We just started our Utah Salt Lake City branch, and then we're going to be starting an Arizona location within 2022 and 2023. Okay. What we primarily do is import fish from around the world, and then we package, we process, and then we provide it to restaurant customers. Our clientele, about 95% of it is sushi restaurants, and then within the sushi restaurants, we specialize more in the, in the premium. Ocean Group's headquarters is in Los Angeles. It was founded 40 years ago through Young Kim and Tony Kim. Now, Young Kim is my father, Tony Kim is my uncle. They started off with a very simple concept. They would get the leftover scraps from local fish markets in the area, which operated uh, very differently about 40 years ago. And they slowly accrued a network of customers who were looking for cheaper fish products. Over time, what we started to specialize in, particular in the tuna, a premium grade tuna that we're looking at, very specific characteristics for. So we bring that in about three to four times a week. Uh, and that's kind of the main item that goes out to our customer base. Our customer base is when they're coming to Ocean Group, they're looking for good tuna and obviously fresh salmon. So those are just two of the, the main items that go out. We carry about 250 different product types. 70% of that is the fresh and then the remaining 30% on the frozen side. We have here with us today Fujisan from San Diego. And Fujisan has been the branch manager for San Diego for approximately 10 years now. Okay, well, congratulations. Thank you. Mr. Fujisan. Good morning. Very nice to meet you. Nice Good morning. To meet you. My name is Fuji. I am a branch manager of the San Diego office. I am 11 C actually with this business and this company. And uh, it was, very small to start. Now, our San Diego branch has been five times bigger than 10 years ago. Wow, congratulations. So I am very proud of our people and uh, our customer for the thanking for the uh, support. Of course, we have a company goal for the business-wise uh, in San Diego, but at the same time, I have a, my personal goal, which is San Diego is the best and also number one place to eat seafood in the United States. Mm. That's my ultimate goal. And uh, I want to be make sure that uh, our company, our product is supporting for that. So I want to make sure all the sushi restaurant you go in San Diego will be, oh, this is a great place mm. to eat. And yes. I want to see how the dining customer, you know, tell us like that. Mm -hmm. So I'm fortunately, uh, you know, glad to go to Japan all the time, every year. And then uh, whenever I go to Japan, I visit a lot of uh, uh, seafood market. And also sometimes I go to see, uh, meet the fishermen. And then I learn a lot of how to uh, cure the fish, how to prep the fish, how to uh, keep the fish, how to grill the fish. So all the knowledge I want to introduce to United States and also uh, making sure that the customer enjoy how we we deliver the item based on the uh, my experience in San Diego. So hopefully in next couple of years, we want more expansion. And then we are now heading to the uh, east, which is uh, Arizona. And then we will expand more. And I want to make sure that the Ocean Group is the one source is the best in the United States. Mm. So trust me, we will. <laughs> and our company will and then i hope everybody uh, hear our name and uh, enjoy the product we carry congratulations thank you so tell me mm -hmm. i'd love to get a tour of your place okay is it possible yes let's go all right let's okay. go uh, this is the LA office but uh sunday yeah, yeah, yeah. office that, also pretty much same but we do, you know, different kind of fish depending on the location, right. the market. This market can be catch anywhere in Japan, also in the United States too, but depending on the location, what they eat is different. Sure. Yeah. Okay. That way, depending on the, what they eat, flavor also, okay. tastes also different. Here, yeah, so where's this from? This is from Hokkaido. Hokkaido as well, okay. Yeah. Very dark, huh? Yeah. And this okay. one is called... Uh, <coughs> Very uh, meat is very similar. Yes, similar to what you showed me earlier. Yes, yeah. Very easy. yeah. Okay. And 
then this is the Kimidai. Kimidai, yeah, one of our favorite. Yeah, yeah, of course, that's beautiful. So go there, when you look at it, it's actually softer, it's better. Softer is better, okay. Some people say, oh, this is not fair. Yeah. Oh, it's soft. No. We check the very side, it's soft or not. Okay. The milk itself is soft, that's the side. Okay. So the thickness, body, and also make sure nice green eye. Yes. Transparency. Yeah. So that is a very good fish to Okay. And this is the barracuda. What barracuda is it called? Barracuda. Oh, barracuda. Japan, we call it a, a lot of you know, customers love this one too because uh, after we play and scale off, and then uh, normally sushi chef torch. Torch, yeah. Yeah, I've seen that, that a lot. makes more flavor. Yeah. And then this is Thai. This is a smaller size. There's a more smaller size also. So okay. This is kind of in the middle. Okay. To the largest. So this can be good for sashimi or fish, or it can be uh, you know sushi. And this fish also actually it's uh, quite seasonal. So this is the right time is good to eat and nice. also very popular. This is a baby sardine. It's actually it's uh, already processed, ready to eat. We put the, like a shred of daikon with the soy sauce yes. and make for even pasta. This is snow crab. Snow meat. crab, okay. Yeah. This kind of processed one is actually uh, easy, but uh, its quality is very good. This is called Ogawa, Hamanaka uni. Uh, this is very popular in us and also in Japan. Okay. Especially Ginza. Okay. A lot of high-end restaurants use this. You know. And what part of the Japan is it from? This is actually from uh, North part of Japan called Hokkaido. Very nicely lined. Okay, and, uh, and the color too. too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good. Our abalone only comes from California, and there's many rules. Abalone is kind of one of those restricted species where it requires a certain like you can only bring in a certain species. So you know we can bring it in from Mexico only because they started using the the hatchlings okay. of the California species, and then they started uh, they started you know farming these. So this one specifically is from Northern California, and then the difference between like let's say this one in Mexico Mexico. Um, Abalone is the thickness of the shell. In terms of the taste of the product, it's it's negligible. We wouldn't be able to tell the difference. The ones that really love abalone will. We have a very special relationship with, uh, with something called Jeju syrup in Korea. This is one of the products I bring. This is called the Starry Flounder. Obviously, the way that this is prepared is different between the Korean cuisine and Japanese. The okay. Koreans like to eat it straight out of the water. They'll have things like this, they'll pull it out, and they'll bleed it right there, and then you'll eat it. Some of our Japanese customers will ask us to bleed it out, ikejime, and then hold it for a couple days under a certain temperature, sure. so that the amino acids come out in the taste. This is the Cheju olive flounder, and kind of this color right here is, is the one that everyone is, you know, like what it's known for. It's spotted, you know, the olive, kind of olive color. Restaurants are looking for more on the four to 4.5, and then, on the Korean sashimi you know, side, they're looking for like a five pound. Like so they, a lot of these guys are a little bit small. These fly in directly from Jeju-do, Korea. These are all farm raised. Okay. Everything here is sashimi grade. Sashimi yeah. grade. Oh so everything wow. Everything that we sell on the first side, uh, there are a couple fish uh, that are not sashimi grade, but they're very specific. Everything else is sashimi grade. So this is our spot prawn or amaebi, and this this comes in from the Santa Barbara area. We usually look to aim to bring about two to 300 pounds a day, but in this last season, our might be it was extremely short. So the reasons that they're saying is because there's an issue with the seaweed up in kind of like the Santa Barbara coastline, which is causing the ecosystem, I guess, to kind of be impacted. When we pick the amaebi, we're looking for almost like a gray, it looks like a grayish color, like towards the head, almost like a, a very light purple. And if I you see. will, I don't know if you can kind of tell from the light over here, but this is this is a good one. Obviously, looking for movement, and so this this guy's moving around. He's good in the water. You know, they're gonna do their little shrimp, their little kick that they yeah, do. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, sure. Right? Best Atlantic salmon right? in the world. Absolutely. Yeah. So How long you guys been carrying it for? So Baca Frost and Ocean Group have been doing business together for about 10 years. Wow, long yeah. time. So okay. A little bit over 10 years. Obviously, you know, since the beginning, they've, they've separated themselves because of the quality. And their quality comes from their, their handling position, as you've seen when you Right, right. Them. So we're bringing in, this is our main item when it comes to salmon. The majority of the customers are looking, especially on the sashimi side, yes. are looking for Baca Frost quality. Um, specific on the sushi side. On the right. poke, poke side, the, the, the product is a little bit expensive. Yeah, sure. So, and you can tell the difference. So this is an example of the Canadian salmon. Oh, wow, look at that color difference, huh? 
Yeah. So this is obviously the back side of it. And when he puts it together here, you'll see the, you'll see the front. But the color is, is very, very different. Right. So customers can tell right away. Yeah, one of many. This is one of, you don't have enough space. How many cases are you bringing in back across? Uh, six containers a week. Six containers yeah, a week. So six times 161. Wow. But, Quite a bit. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a big amount. And then on top of that, the, the upkeep, the maintenance, that's the on, the on the product. As soon as we get it, we have the pork poles re-iced. We have to check the quality of fish every day. And then are you, are these mostly whole? So everything we bring in is whole. It's whole, right? Okay. Yeah. Just okay. like, you know, out of the factory. Yep. When they got okay. it and they pull it out, put it in the box, and then that's how we receive it. Nice. I'm excited to see their eight-hour fish, though. You okay. Know, what they're doing with their, their plane. We either have it wrapped in poly bag because the customer prefers it in this kind of bag, or we have our guys wrap it like this. And that's for customers that typically want to store their salmon. So it's a very specific procedure for them, and they make sure they have to roll the, the ends to keep the fish the fish form and then they leave a bit of the tail out right here because there's going to be inevitable drip that comes out and so we want some of that to fall as it is delivered to okay customer. so everything especially what, what i wanted to explain over there the way he wraps the fish and the way young kim like every single procedure like if you walk in here and try to do the you know the, the packing of the tuna you're going to get yelled at every five to ten seconds because they have a very specific way of doing things, even the way that you know, the way the head goes on the table, right? Um, or the sticker and where they place all the stickers, and even for young Kim, like he pats the box, he believes that him patting the box is like and I'm sending it off in, in the right way. A lot of the walking customers appreciate the fact that young Kim, the owner, is is here every single day, right? And he's here even on Sundays, so wow. I mean, he's literally an everyday kind of guy. He's here by about two thirty three, and then he does the tuna room, and th this is kind of like. His, okay. uh, his peaceful oh, nice. peaceful zone. His, uh, so, yeah. his sanctuary. Yeah. What do you think? How many fish do you fillet every single day? Oh, these guys? Yeah. They're filleting about, in a given day, about four to five hundred cases. Wow. Oh. One, two, three, four, about six fillet guys. Wow. So that's roughly about twelve hundred fish. Wow.
This is a tuna head. Oh, okay. So customers, especially the walking customers, will come in and grab one. Okay. Yes, you know th this is usually gets tossed unless a customer. Do you charge this? No, like when they take it, then we don't. Because okay. we don't. We don't. Uh, There's a lot of meat so too, isn't there? There I mean, is. There's a ton. You know? Yeah. So like where everyone that. is looking is like definitely like on that cheek, the cheek meat. Right, the cheek meat. Yeah. yeah so many parts of tuna yeah. you can eat. Oh, the tuna. This is Bukino. Yeah. This is from Mexico. This is where we're rushing the guys the most right here. Because everything's packed, everything's ready, and then now from here the drivers have to make sure everything's loaded correct in the order that they're gonna be delivered. Okay. But then we don't want them to be out here for more than about 30 minutes. So I wanted to give this to both you and Hirozan. Okay. Obviously you guys took such good care of me when I went to Baca Frost. And this is just a small token of appreciation. Oh so, wow, look at that. And this holds special meaning for us. And and what this is is this is the, the tip of the spear that goes inside the wild bluefin. And so every time we find one of these, it's actually bad for business because it means that there's a big chunk of meat that cannot be sold anymore. Okay. But for young Kim, every time we find one of these, right. we hold it and then some of the guys sharpen it oh, and they wow. make necklaces out of it or whatever. But oh, this is so nice. It's a sign of good luck for young Kim. It's, okay. It's, it's like a, it's when he sees that, he, he thinks that the catch for the, this year is going to be good. And so every time we find one, this is we, we collect them and, and obviously this wow. one is for you guys. Hopefully that good luck carries forward. Thank you so yeah, much. You know. Thank you. Thank you. How often do you find these? Very rarely. I mean, wow. usually they're very good at taking them out, but sometimes they're too deep in the meat that when they take it out, you know, we're going to return it and say like, hey, I got damaged meat. Okay. You know? Yeah. Here, here's proof. Yeah. But then, you know, when we find it like this, we don't, we don't request credit. We don't, you know, any of that. We yeah. Just, yeah. We take it in as. Well, that's an honor to receive it from you. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. Yeah, I won't tell here I got it though. <laughs> it's yours. Thank you. It's yours. <laughs> Write your name on it. Hey, I came here at five in the morning, so yep. I, I get to get a perk, right? Exactly. That's, right. That's why I pay.